whole congregation of the sons of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness, the wilderness of sin. <laughs> but the sons, the sons of Israel said to them, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt. So they're mocking Moses and Aaron here. And they said, when we sat by the pots of meat, when we ate bread until we were full. You know, when you're going through a hard time like that, it is hard not to complain. Uh, I went through ranger school back in the 90s, the early 90s, in wintertime, and you only got two MREs a day. And it was tough, man. I mean, I, I lost all of my fat. I was down to burning muscle for energy. That's what happens to the other guys too. I'll never forget that smell as you're walking forward. You could, this is just awful smell. And it's, I asked one of the instructors what that was, and he said it was somebody's burning muscle for energy because all the fat's gone, basically. And so you, you, when you're really hungry, it's easy to complain. And I remember thinking like, oh man, if we were just, if I was just back home having peanut butter and steak and, and uh, soup and, and we, would, we would make lists of foods that we loved and things like that. So I don't think God was really angry with them right here. He was showing lots of patience toward them. Of course, it was sin, what they were doing, complaining and grumbling, but you know, God he provides, and that's what he does here. And God's gracious and merciful, and that's what we see in this. So let's keep going in it. So when they were saying, when we sat by the pots of meat, did they really sit by pots of meat? Come on, they were slaves in Egypt. They were treated horribly. I doubt that. But when we ate bread until we were full, for you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill this entire assembly with hunger, they grumbled. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. So God is so gracious, right? Here he says, I'm going to rain down bread. I'm going to give you food. I'm going to give you what you need. He's going to provide. That's what he does. So here we see that this manna came down, right? The, the manna is the bread of heaven that came down. And it says in the Bible that it was like frost or like snow, right? And it's interesting to me, I don't know about you, but when you look at a snowflake up close, I've captured one in my jacket before, and they actually look like little stars of David. They're really interesting. They look like a, the, the actual star of David, and there's these patterns just like this. This is a real snowflake right here, by the way. Look at that pattern that God has, even in a snowflake. Isn't that beautiful? But anyway, there was, there was this frost on the ground, and it was this manna that God provided for them. So when the layer of dew evaporated, behold, the surface of the wilderness, there was a fine flake-like thing, fine as the frost on the ground. And it was white like snow, and it was just, it was awesome. So when the sons of Israel saw it, they said to one another, what is it? And that's the Hebrew word for manna. Manna is the Hebrew word for what is it, right? For they did not know what it was. So the, the desert floor was covered when they woke up with this beautiful white snow, white as snow, frost-like grain, this fine, fine grain that they can collect and, and make cakes out of and eat. And the Bible says interesting things about it. So the people of Israel called this bread from heaven, man of which in Hebrew means, what is it? <laughs> what is going on? Forget about it, right? What is it? So the first time Israel saw Jesus, they asked, who are you? Remember, they asked, are you the Christ? Tell us plainly. And they said things like, well, we don't know where he comes from. And and Jesus even asked others, you know, who do they say that I am? And it was only Peter who said, you're the Christ, which means Messiah. You are the Mashiach, Peter said. And here, you know, after Jesus fed uh, many people with bread and Israel, the first time, his first visitation, right? Israel saw Jesus and they asked, who are you? Or what are you? Are you the Messiah? And in John 6, this is what we see. This is the work of God that you believe in him who he has sent, Jesus said to them, to the crowd. This is the work of God that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, what are you doing as a sign that we may believe in you? 
And Jesus said, or they said to him, what work are you performing? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness as it is written. So now they're quoting here, they're quoting Exodus. He gave them bread out of heaven to eat. They were quoting from the old, their, their scriptures there, right? And then Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, it is not Moses, because they were giving Moses the credit for getting this bread from heaven. It was not Moses, Jesus said, who has given you the bread out of heaven, but it is my father who gives you the true bread out of heaven. And who is that? It's himself. God the Son, the Son of God. He is the true bread of heaven. Jesus continued, For the bread of God is that which comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. I am the bread of life, Jesus said. I am. It was an I am statement he was making right there. There are seven of them in in the book of John. He said, I am the bread of life. Isn't that awesome, you guys? He is that manna from heaven. And Moses said, this is in back in Exodus 16, and Moses said to them, it is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. Moses himself didn't take credit. He gave the credit to God where it belongs, guys. And the house of Israel named the bread manna. And it was like coriander seed, white And its taste was like wafers with honey. Wafers with honey. I I don't know about you, but I love honey. Um, I get that Dave's Killer bread. It's really good bread. I like it. And toast it. My son and I will put some butter and a little bit of honey on there. Oh, man, it's so good. But I would imagine that's what it tastes like, this bread of heaven. It was sweet. And Jesus is sweet, too. His words are sweet. His spirit is sweet. The Holy Spirit, if you believe in Jesus, you will be filled with the Spirit. You'll become a new creation. And it's all about believing and trusting. Believing, faith is just believing and trusting. That's what it is. Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness, right? Yes, that's what the Bible says in Genesis. In Abraham's story, you can look it up. That's how he was accounted as righteous, believing and trusting God. That's what faith is, real faith, you guys. So here we are in, in Jesus, or in Exodus, it says, and it was like coriander seed. It was like, it was like a donut, basically. It was like bread, wafer with honey. It was sweet and delicious. So both manna and Jesus came down from heaven. It was a supernatural gift from God in both cases, you guys. And then in John 6, it continues, and he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. He's speaking symbolically there, but he's speaking that he's the bread of life. And they were saying, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? Whoa. So now they're saying like, they're kind of saying like, you know, whatever, you're, you're Jesus. We know who your mother and father are. Well, Joseph wasn't really his father. He was his stepfather. But there's an old Jewish scripture. In fact, not not so much a scripture, but uh, in the Talmud, in their commentary, there's a place where we find that the Messiah was to be the son of Joseph. In fact, it even says Yeshua or Joshua, the son of Joseph. Isn't that interesting? Because Joshua was of the tribe of Joseph. Joseph, Ephraim, right, was a tribe of Joseph. And it's interesting that we see that even in the Talmud. But if you go to Genesis chapter 49, you can see where Jacob has two prophecies that are messianic. And one of them is for Judah. The other one is for Joseph. Read it. Check it out. It's like the Judah's was the first coming, and it's like Joseph's the second coming, where Jesus rules and reigns as the Messiah and King of the world and the nations. It's it's pretty epic. Read it. But anyway, whose father and mother we know, right? He isn't this the son of Joseph? So they were actually quoting prophecy. If you look at Genesis chapter forty nine, and there's other places as well. And John 6 continues, so they keep grumbling against Jesus and saying, how does he now say I have come down out of heaven? They're asking. 
So belief is required, you guys. Belief is required to receive the manna, right? And some of the Israelites in Moses' story did not believe God about the manna. Some of them were collecting a bunch of it, right? More than they needed because they were worried. They didn't trust God. They didn't trust his word. So belief is required to receive Jesus as well, my friend. He is the bread of life. You must believe first and foremost. That's the key. So manna nourished them physically, but they still died, right? Their souls lived, but their bodies, they died in that wilderness, that generation. So the manna saved Israelites from the Israelites from hunger, but Jesus saves us from our sin, right? More importantly, where it's it's more importantly of where you go forever. Where will you be forever? That's the most important thing, you guys. He offers himself as our spiritual nourishment that if we partake of him, that is Jesus, we will never again be hungry. And that speaks of spiritually. So Jesus said, come to me, All you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, Jesus said. Look at those nail-pierced hands. He's offering this salvation to you, this, this nourishment to you, my friend. God is offering that to you right now. You may be feeling convicted in your heart. It could be the Holy Spirit working on your heart right now, knocking on the door to your heart gently and saying, Open the door. Let me in. That's what Jesus is saying. And the Holy Spirit directs you to Jesus always. Does that convict you? Would you like to receive Christ? That's a good thing. You could be forgiven of all your sins. And you could be promised and guaranteed by God's word that if you believe in him, you will go to heaven with him in paradise forever and ever. But you have to put your trust and your faith, believe and trust in Jesus Christ and receive him as your Lord and as your Savior. Would you like to do that? You can do it right now, my friend, where you're doing. Just stop what you're doing. This will be a prayer from you to God, to Yahweh, who loves you. And he had Jesus died on the cross. He came down out of heaven. The Son of God, the one and only Son of God, God the Son, came down, died on that cross, and he shed his blood for you. Why? Because he loves you. But in three days, he was raised from the dead. And that's why Christians like me, we get so excited about that because we are promised to be resurrected from the dead as well and live forever and ever and ever. That means this physical body will be reunited. If I die, someday I'll be reunited with this body. My soul will be, and I'll live forever and ever with Jesus. Or if he comes back, we're going to be caught up to be with him in the air and transformed into our our new supernatural bodies. Isn't that awesome, you guys? But if you'd like to receive Jesus, if you've never received him, you can do that right now. You can say this prayer after me. Are you ready? Repeat these words after me from your heart to God. Dear God, I know that I am a sinner and I am sorry for my sin. Please help me to turn from my sin and to follow you. I believe that Jesus died on the cross. I believe he shed his blood for me. I also believe that in three days, he was raised from the dead, and he's alive today. I choose to follow him as my Lord and as my Savior from this day forward. Pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, my friend. If you did that, heaven rejoices, it says in the Bible, over one who repents. That means turns to God, and you have done that. So congratulations, my friend. Make sure you're going to a Bible-believing church, Bible-teaching church. Make sure you're getting fellowship with other believers and praying every day. Keep that relationship strong in Him. Hey, if you haven't checked out this playlist, check it out. How to Find Jesus in the Old Testament. You can catch up on all the other videos. We went through Joseph was our last uh, series we went through on how Joseph was a type of Christ, the type of Jesus. I think you'll love it. So click on this playlist right here.